When preparing to do a central venous catheterization, first identify the site that you plan to place the catheter. In this case, we will be placing a right subclavian central line in this location here. I will begin by cleansing the area. When you're cleansing for a subclavian line or an internal jugular line, be sure to cleanse the entire area for both sites in case you need to move from one to the other. Once your site has been prepped, ensure that all of your other equipment is going to be set up prior to entering into the sterile field. In this case, make sure you have a syringe and heplock available to cap the central line once you complete. Other important personal protective equipment that must be worn for this procedure includes a bouffant cap to cover the hair. Also be sure to cover any facial hair that may be visible. A mask with face shield. Open your kit and prepare it in a sterile manner so that you may access the equipment once you've placed your sterile gown and gloves. Before placing your sterile gown, be sure you open your gloves and set them out so that they're available once you get into your sterile equipment. Go ahead and reach into your sterile kit and get out the drape. The drape will have an adhesive that can be peeled off. Fold the drape so that it may be stuck to the patient and then unfold it. Continue to palpate for your landmarks, including the sternal notch, and follow along the clavicle to find your entry point approximately a third of the way in from the distal margin. Continue to prep your kit so that you're ready to place the line once you get access. Especially if the patient is awake, be sure to instill adequate amounts of lidocaine for anesthesia into the skin surface. Make, begin by pulling up a skin wheel and then follow along the track that you would for your insertion of your introducer needle to begin anesthetizing the entire way. Keep in mind you will have to go just underneath the clavicle, withdrawing as you advance to make sure that there's no intravascular placement, then inject slowly as you return the needle to adequately anesthetize the entire track. Remove any cover that may be present on your guide wire and pull back so that it can be advanced easily. Also, open your central line port so that the wire may pass easily as you advance. Enter applying negative pressure, aiming towards the sternal notch. Use one finger to help guide underneath the clavicle and continue advancing with slight negative pressure until you reach the vessel for cannulation. If you do not get it on the first pass, withdraw slightly and redirect until you're able to achieve a blood return that indicates venous entrance. As you advance, if you get a flash followed by no return, reduce the amount of pressure and withdraw the needle slowly in case you have traversed the vessel completely. Once inside, grab your guide wire and begin advancing. Use of the safety syringe helps to limit the risk of air embolism. If the wire does not flow smoothly, consider withdrawing the wire and replace the needle until confirmation of placement is confirmed. Should the wire ever become stuck and you're unable to easily withdraw it, withdraw the wire and needle together in a single unit to prevent breaking the wire or leaving a foreign body. Once the wire has been placed, you may withdraw the needle, being sure not to accidentally withdraw the wire with it if you're trying to leave it into the vessel lumen. A skin nick can now be made using the 11 blade scalpel. This will allow for placement of the dilator as you will not be able to pass the catheter through intact skin. As you advance the dilator, be sure to keep hold of the loose end of the wire 
to prevent accidentally pushing the wire deep into the tissue structures. A slight twisting motion may be needed to advance the dilator all the way, and a flash of blood should be expected as the dilator is withdrawn. Once the dilator has been removed, you may now advance the catheter along the wire into the vessel. Again, ensure you have control of the loose end of the wire before advancing to prevent in inadvertent administration of the wire inside of the vasculature. For both the subclavian and internal jugular lines on an adult patient, approximately 15 to 17 centimeters is an appropriate depth. Be sure to monitor the patient's heart rhythm during placement to ensure that there is no ventricular irritation that may be indicated on the monitor strip. Once placed, make sure that you have the end of the tube covered or capped to prevent accidental air embolism. Now your assistant can help by placing the heplock onto the open catheter. Now, may, now you may use the included plastic attachment devices and suture to keep the catheter from being dislodged during transport or administering medications. Be sure to place a bio patch underneath at this entrance site to help decrease infection. If your kit has a straight needle, be sure not to push the needle towards your own fingers to prevent inadvertent needle stick injuries. In this case, I'll be pushing the needle all the way through the skin and then pulling it out on the far side without pushing towards my own hand. Now I can pass the blunt portion of the needle back through to decrease the risk of injury. This is especially important in a code or trauma situation where there may be lots of movement of the patient during placement. As you uncover the patient, be ready to place a tegaderm onto the site and label it with the date and time of placement. After any placement of a line, either subclavian or internal jugular, be sure to get a chest x-ray to confirm line position and the absence of any complications from a pneumothorax.